Hi, welcome to Overcoming Medica Hair Loss Summit. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I'm your host. And today I am with Maurice Cardin. She is a best selling author, university of communications professor, coach, consultant, and worship leader. Years ago, she made a life changing decision to stop bashing herself. She then embarked on years of studying, research, and practice until she transformed her inner speech. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite tools and actually the tool that brought me to the other side, which is self-talk. We're going to talk about how do we talk to ourselves, our relationship with ourselves, what to do when we're in a dark place. And I'm so happy to have you here, Maurice. I know this, this took me to the other side and now you're an expert on this. So thank you so much for being here today. Well, Valerie, thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Awesome. So let us know, how did, how did you start in this work? You know, I think it was like a lot of people that suddenly you hit a place in your life where something happens mm -hmm. and you go through a little bit what they call a dark night of the soul. And it made me realize that it didn't really matter what I had or what I was achieving. What mattered is how I felt inside and what mattered is how I spoke to myself and how I treated myself because nothing on the outside ever changed that temporarily, you know, something happens, you get happy or you get more sad or, but really what counted was how I spoke to myself. So it was a little bit like you, you know, something difficult happened and I decided I was going to pull myself through it. And one concept that really was a game changer for me, it's when I heard the phrase, I am more important than my problems. And suddenly it kind of gave me the space to believe that I was not my problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always good. I was always lovable. I was always enough. I was always beautiful. And that, that never changed. Mm -hmm. So I love that sentence. I love how self-talk, you know, self-talk has a lot of beautiful things you can say to yourself. But really the concept when we talk about self-talk love, is that you are going to stand by yourself as a best friend would. And that's never conditional, right? Mm -hmm. That's really, it's not about, you know, I could love you, but this happened to you. So I guess I, I don't love you anymore, right? It's really about showing up no matter what's going on and staying with yourself until you pull through the other side. Right. And, and like we, we actually get to choose, right? Like, how do we talk to ourselves? Do we want to be our best friends or do we want to be your worst enemy? We don't, we don't, we never know. We get to choose. We get to make the decision every morning. Who are we going to be for ourselves? How are we going to talk to ourselves that day? And so I don't know that I've shared with you that uh, when I was going through my hair loss at the very beginning, um, I was really, really depressed. I went through a really deep depression and it wasn't until I switched that conversation with myself that I started living my life differently. So in the morning, I will wake up in the morning. And first of all, at the beginning, I will spend about two hours getting ready because I will spend two hours just looking in the mirror, trying to figure it out how to make this look better. Are they going to, you know, what are people going to think? Are they going to notice, you know, two hours just in self-criticism because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a conversation. It was self-criticism for two hours until I finally went on with my day. And obviously if you start your day like that, your day's not going to be so great. And um, it wasn't until I started my morning legitimately just talking to myself in the mirror and saying, you're not your hair. Valerie, you're not your hair. You're not your hair. You're amazing. You are this person. Like you got, you know, you are where you are today because like I, I started having a conversation with myself about, why do I love myself? You are love. You are lovable. You're a good person. I remember, like even saying, like I'm a good person, and so I, I just know that is that is that switch is that choice uh, of how we start our day that can make a huge difference. Yeah, I, you know, it's really inspiring the way you switched and made that choice because it really is just like you choose how you're going to speak to your friend, right? what you're going to say when they're going through a hard time, how you're going to show up for them with your words. It's the same for you. You think you might think it doesn't matter how you speak to yourself, but it matters very much. You know, all of this research now is showing and, and neuroimaging is showing that part of your brain hears everything and it responds. It's having a conversation. 
And so you have, you know, like my friend calls it the head DJ. It's speaking to you all the time, but what is it saying? Right. You know, bringing you up or is it bringing you down? Is it life affirming or is it life denying? Right. So once you catch it in the act, um, its days are numbered. Because once you realize and you're like, like when I realized how I spoke to myself, I was kind of shocked when I really realized and it was a morning mm -hmm. and I woke up and again, that negative voice was speaking to me, you know, you're not good enough and you're a fraud and you went out too late, Nessa, now the day's shot. I can't try. It was just going, I was very mean. My voice was very critical. But for some reason that morning I heard it. And I thought if I opened my eyes and someone else was right there and that's how they started speaking to me first thing in the morning, I'd stand up for myself. I'd protect myself. I'd ask them to leave. But I let myself speak to myself that way. So I realized two things and I asked it to stop. I realized one, I had a choice. Two, when I asked it to stop, it did. So I had some power over this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that when I started speaking to myself in another way, my whole body reacted differently. Mm -hmm right? It's like when you're with a good friend who's suddenly like telling you how lovable you are and how much they care about you. Like it changes your energy, right? And that's really an important thing. And so I choose all the time. It doesn't mean sometimes I don't slip. Something will happen and I'll get triggered and it'll start. But now I catch it very quickly. And I do what I call the switcheroo. Uh -huh. I'll stop it and then introduce something else right? I'll change the tone. Uh, but I always remember that I choose. And every day I choose again, and I choose again, and I choose again. Because it's kind of like the great equalizer self-talk. Doesn't matter what you have, doesn't matter who you are. If inside you're trashing yourself, what kind of a life is that? It's stressful, it's sad, it, you know? But if inside you're telling yourself that you're a worthy person, and that you're capable of things, and that you're lovable and beautiful and good, suddenly that changes everything, right? Yeah. It changes everything. Yeah, and I think it's important what you said that it is a daily practice. This is not something that, that you're going to do one day, and then the next day you're going to feel the same way, because you're not, right? Yeah, like, uh, This is something that you have absolutely have to do every day. Um, I had an experience recently where I decided that I was going to not wear my hair, um, like the hair piece. And, um, like the first night it was amazing. I felt like a million bucks, you know, I'm not wearing this and I get to be authentic and I get to share myself and people will get to see who I am. And I was just up here. And then the next day I wake up. And I get to see myself in the mirror, right? Because the problem, well, it's not a problem, but what happens with hair loss is like you get to see it every single day. Like your image is looking right back at you. And yeah. even if you have all these thoughts, because you, you can might want to be positive, but you're still looking at yourself, right? So that's what's also really hard about hair loss is you have to, you experience it. Like you're looking at it in the mirror. So I would look at it. So the next day I woke up and I, and I, you know, I, I already know that I have to, to have a positive talk with myself, but it, I was looking at myself without hair, right. Without, without my hair. So you're kind of in shock and you have to process like, okay, what distinguish, stop for a moment and distinguish. This is you, what you're seeing, but then this is, who you are, which is your soul, your soul, that it's completely, you know, it, it doesn't, one thing doesn't depend of, of the other, like your body, uh, you know, but the way you look doesn't affect who you are. And I had to get to that point. Right. So one day I was really great. The other day I was really depressed because I was looking at myself. And so I realized that what it takes is to know that no matter what I look, I'm still me. So I think also, also that's, that's one of the tricks is um, to always remind myself when I'm, when I'm really, really down that no matter what I look like, I'm still me and yeah. I still get to, to live the life that I want. And I still, you know, get to be happy, to, to love, to be loved um, instead of just staying in this dark place. But there, there are so many distinctions again, that like you have 
to do it every day because it's not it's not something that because you do it one day then you're forever going to be changed no it's a continuous practice like you said you get better at it and you catch it quicker or if you've told yourself something that's really harsh then you realize what you've done right and you can have a conversation with yourself but one thing to think about is that we have a lot of voices inside okay so if you think about it like a bus you're the bus driver and every seat is occupied with one of your voices okay so some of them they're, they, they're negative that's their job right they're negative and some of them are really positive and they're like a coach and they're going to get you through some of them are very sweet some of them are mellow some of them are angry so but you're in charge of all these voices right and what's most important is which voices are sitting right behind you who do you hear all the time right so if you have a voice that's kind and encouraging and she's like you know you're doing a great job driving the bus over there and okay so you drove us in the ditch a bit it's all right we're going to get it out and we're going to get to our destination it makes a big difference in your life than if you have a voice telling you you're no good you never should be in charge of this bus and some people actually they're not even driving their own bus they're sitting in the back and what's driving this bus is these voices and you're not the voice you're the one who hears them mm -hmm. So they're showing you are none of these voices. You're just the witness, right? So you can decide to say, look, thank you for these comments. And I know it's difficult for you to see me this way. And it upsets you. And, and you get really critical when that happens. Because in a way, they all love us, but they show it in a weird way, right? Mm -hmm. The voice might be really critical because it wants to keep you safe. So if it humiliates you and shames you, then maybe you won't, you'll stop what you're doing. You won't put yourself out there. And the voice thinks you'll be safe that way, okay? But it's like having a two-year-old having a tantrum in charge. So you can decide, this is who I want in the seat behind me. I'm promoting one of the voices from the back. I need a good friend who's gonna, you know, this is like a tough, tough stretch right now, right? We're going through a lot of stuff. There's a big storm. I need to focus on this road and I want my best friend behind me. So that's where a lot of your choice comes in. Who are you gonna listen to? Knowing they're always on your bus, you can't get rid of them. But some of them can sit, you know, some of them I have now, they used to sit behind me. Now they're in the very back. But sometimes they come up, something will trigger them. You know, there, an event happens in my life or I've made a mistake and it triggers that voice. And the first thing I know, it's there and very critical. But now I know it's just that voice, right? And I can bring another voice in and I can comfort myself and I can stand by myself because I have that already in me. It just depends how I'm going to manage it and what I'm going to do, but it's already there as a gift. It's just realizing that these voices, they're with you, but they're not you. And that inside you do have a voice who thinks you're absolutely awesome. And maybe it wants a promotion to the front, right? Maybe, maybe it's not speaking loud enough yet. You know, it needs you to shush some voices so you can hear what it has to say. Right. And another thing that when you say looking behind, I was thinking about our past, um, that another thing that I had to do was to reframe my story instead of um, thinking about my hair loss, about something bad, that something really bad happened to me is where has this taken me? What good things have come out of this? Um, and I know it's hard. I know it's hard when you're, you know, in that situation to think about something positive, but once you reframe my, once I reframe my story, now I can tell you that without alopecia, I wouldn't be who I am today. Like I wouldn't be the strong person that I am today. I wouldn't love myself the way I love myself. I wouldn't, um, I don't know everything. <laughs> I couldn't, I get, I get, you know, I, I can go on and on. It's, it's everything. I think this definitely has uh, made me the person that I am right now. So I will invite you to reframe your story um, and watch how you're telling your story, because that's another thing that sometimes when we're, when we're sharing ourselves with people, we start saying, you know, we start talking, I'm sorry, but we start talking shit about ourselves. Yeah. Like that's not good. Not only it's not good, um, you know, because it's just going to hurt you, right? Like you, even though you're telling somebody, it stays in your subconscious. All of that, it stays with you. 
And so you want to reframe your story and make it a positive story. Make it a story where you see the benefits, where you see, um, you know, what, what good things have this, has this brought you into your life. And I wanted to ask you something. I know we had a conversation where uh, you were telling me the impact of a positive thought versus a negative thought. Because in reality, that's, it makes a huge difference, correct? When we're thinking negative thoughts as opposed to positive thoughts? It makes such a difference in everything, okay? So when you choose, when you start choosing loving and positive self-talk, what you're actually doing is that you're sending a message throughout your body. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get through this, right? Mm -hmm. Good things will happen to me. You know, I'm going to be an inspiration to other women. Whatever it is that you're doing when, with this positive self-talk, it's changing not just how you feel, but it's changing every cell in your body. Right. So every thought you have, every time you're telling yourself something, it's sending a message to each cell, telling them, I'm okay. I'm healthy. Everything's going to be good. As opposed to things are not fine. You know, you're sending them almost like this message of, you know, to start reacting in a negative way because that's what's going on in the system. Right. So it's very powerful, you know, for your health too. Studies have shown that your immune system gets boosted when you're speaking to yourself in a positive way. There's all these different health benefits. There's for your morale, how you feel about things. Um, there's about achieving things in life too. It really helps the story you're telling about yourself, right? Are you a story of someone who decided they were going to be the hero of their own story, right? Are you showing up as that person? You know, that's no matter what's happened to them, that they're figuring it out, they're processing it, they're living with it, they're living through it, they're going to climb that ladder with the help of others and reach down and bring others up with them like you're doing with the summit, right? So reframing has a lot to do with it and also to think, it's not like you had a negative thought and oh, then you use that as an excuse to have even more negative thoughts. But it's just to really start having this compassion for yourself and this kindness and to always remember, how would I show up if this was my best friend? Mm -hmm. Would I trash her in front of someone else? Mm -hmm. Would I do that? No, I would never, right? So always to think about that, how I show up from, and you'll start to see the difference. Part of you relaxes because she doesn't have to constantly be like, am I going to get trashed, right? I'm doing my best here. And is she going to put me down again, right? It'll start to relax and it'll start to trust you. Yes, trust. Um, trust is huge. And that was uh, one thing also that I had to gain uh, for myself, right? To trust that everything was going to be fine. Because once you start seeing that something's wrong with your body, you almost feel that everything's wrong, right? Because if something's wrong with my body, and something's wrong with me, and then something's wrong with my life. And then, right, like everything is wrong now. So uh, the one thing also that I had to, to, to switch in my mindset was to trust that everything was going to be fine. That yes, I was losing my hair, but my life wasn't going to end. I wasn't going to die. Everything was going to be fine, but you almost had to surrender, surrender and trust that everything is going to be fine. Yeah. That's a big part surrendering. It's hard for everybody, no matter what's going on. But how beautiful when you realize that all I have to do is be myself and show right. up as a version of myself. And, and when you, and surrendering specifically, because when you start losing your hair, you have no control over it. So I spent years trying to control that outcome, trying to grow my hair back. So I spent money and ah, treatments and therapists and all the things and control, 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 trying to get my hair back. And I spend all my energy, my life and my time in growing my hair back. And so I gave all the power and all the control to growing my hair back instead of myself controlling my life. That took over everything. So the moment I surrender and I said, okay, you know what? This is, it might not happen, but I still get to live that when I made that choice was when everything changed. It was, it was a mix of the two. It was me making the decision. I get to live my life. I get to create my life. I get to do whatever I want with my life. 
and I'm gonna let go of the control of growing my hair. Just give it up. You know, if it comes back, it comes back. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And and that just gave me, you know, the freedom to to start over, pretty much. It's very powerful when we tell ourselves this may or may not happen, and to give up the control over it, right? And I can just imagine that where you spend your energy and your time and your money now must be very different nowadays, right? Right, what you're able to accomplish when you're not sending something down a road of like, that you have no control over it. Not to say that you don't wanna make efforts if you want something in your life, you must. Right. There's a lot of things that, facing a situation that you have no control of it is often a big wake up call for women. Because often we've had control. You know, if you just study harder, you'll get a better grade. Or if you work harder at work, you'll succeed. And when you realize that there's something that it, it's not about your efforts, right? It makes you realize. For me, when, that, when I realized that, and I was going through a really hard time, but it was about infertility and having trouble conceiving a child. When I realized it was so out of my control, what was very important to me is to say, I'm not going to stay this sad person. I'm not going to say this person that feels that she has no power. Mm -hmm. And also that's not the hero of her story at all. I had, I was a victim, right? This had happened to me, right? And poor me. So when I let go of those things, like you said, when I surrendered and I thought, wow, but I want to be another person through this, right? I'm going to, I, you know, I actually remember telling myself, I'm getting through this. Not only am I getting through this, but I'm going to thrive no matter what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that was very freeing, mm -hmm. very freeing. Yeah, and I think you just said something key also, which is, um, are we playing victim? Or like you said before, are you going to be the hero of your own story? And I think that for years also, I was playing victim. I didn't even know it, right? Because I felt like the victim. Now I look back and you know, I, I can see how I could have made the choice earlier, but I invite you to, to look at like, where are you right now? Are you, who do you, and who do you want to be? Most important. Do you want to be the hero of your life or do you want to be the victim of your life? Because uh, the moment you, you make that decision and you talk to yourself like it and you, you know, just, just switch all the little things from the moment you wake up everything starts shifting. And, and again, so I want to, I want to, I want to say something about the conversation we're having. It's like doing it once it's not going to work. And I already said this, but I had to repeat it. <laughs> it's not going to do it. This yeah. is really a daily practice. Um, the way you talk to yourself, what you're thinking about yourself, how are you treating yourself? Um, and also something really important, how we said, well, you're not going to, you're not going to talk like that to your best friend. It's like, talk to your best friends and tell them what you're up to. This is something that I also, you know, learned with time is like, if you share with your friends what you want to do and who you want to be, they'll support you when you're, when you're crashing down, right? If you tell your friends, look, I'm having a really hard time with, you know, if you don't want to, if you don't want to share about the hair loss, it's fine, but just say, you know, I'm, I'm really depressed and, you know, I, I want to get out of this funk, your friends are going to come and they're going to support you. They're going to, they're going to tell you what you need to hear. So please don't be afraid of sharing what's happening in your life. It's really important that we surround ourselves with people that, that care for us and, and that are going to support us in the, you know, in this, in this road. I completely agree with you. There was something really beautiful that was said to me once, and I've repeated that to myself a lot because, you know, sometimes it's a bit scary to tell the truth, even if it's not about the situation, about how you're feeling, right? It's, mm -hmm. you feel so vulnerable, but when you tell the truth, when you give yourself permission, so it starts with you, I am just going to show up as me. When you give yourself permission to tell the truth, your real friends and allies step up because they see who you really are, right? And they make new ones and you make new ones. And that's something wonderful. It's very freeing as opposed to trying to control the situation with friends and what they know and what they don't know. And if, they, oh, if they knew this about me, like they wouldn't like me anymore. When people know the truth, they can really get excited by the real you and come and love you. Right? So that's been a big lesson for me too, to give myself permission 
to be myself and to tell the truth. Yeah. Because when you, when you tell the truth and there is nothing between you and the other person, it's just you. Yeah. That's, that's right. And they, they can know what's going on so they can help you more. So when you're telling your, and that involves telling yourself the truth too, right? Sometimes you don't want it to be true, right? But the day I told myself this may or may not happen for me. Wow. Wow. That was hard to hear. But after that, I was free. Right. I told myself the truth, yeah. so, but also with compassion, right? It's not about the truth and the hard truth. It's about really realizing that you are such a lovable, good person. That's enough, beautiful. And you've got these gifts to give and the world needs you to show up as yourself, right? There's enough other people doing whatever they're doing. Right? You've come in with a unique set of gifts and of qualities and energy. And just allowing yourself to be you, that's a gift you give to yourself and to everybody. Absolutely. And that, that's, you just nailed that because that's absolutely the reason why I created the summit is because I know that each and every one of you that is going through Medica hair loss right now get to live your life you get to live your life you get to be happy you get to create whatever you want to create it doesn't matter that you're losing your hair i know it's hard i know it hurts i know it's difficult to look at yourself in the mirror i know that but you also get to create a new life and that's why we have this all the tools all the resources even community now that we're talking about you know relying on each other if you don't feel comfortable sharing your experience with other people because you're not there yet, and that's totally fine. I didn't tell anybody for many, many years. You get to rely on this community. Now you know that there are hundreds, thousands, actually millions of people in this country that are going through the same thing. So please, please just share yourselves, rely on your community, keep your self-talk on check every single day. So Maurice, this has been amazing. We have touched on so much. Every single part of the conversation has been gold. But I also know that you have an amazing gift for the audience, and I don't want to miss that. I know. I, I, you know, based, I was really thinking about what I would really like to share with your listeners. And again, I started talking about this concept of I am more important than my problems. And I think that that can really be like, planting a little seed for everyone, right? To start even thinking about that. Is it possible that I could be more important than my problems? And so I created a worksheet just for your listeners where you spend a few moments with yourself. It doesn't take a long time to do, but it makes you slow down. You know, you could sit down with yourself, maybe even light a little candle and, you know, just tell yourself a few things you'd like yourself to really know, like you would for a best friend. And it also ends with a little exercise. Like when you put your hand on your heart, it really builds a strong connection. And so to put your hand on your heart and to repeat that to yourself, I am more important than my problems. I love that. So we're going to find, uh, at the, when you get the interview, you're going to get the link to the sheet, correct? It's a PDF? That's right. A very easily downloadable PDF. Awesome. Um, well, Maurice, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I've, I have to interview you again. I have to tell you that much because I feel like every time we chat, like something new comes up and I, and I learn more and more about self-talk, which is one of my favorite topics. So um, I hope I get to interview you soon. And again, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, really. I'd love to be having another conversation with you. I learned from you so much too. And thank you for doing this for all women, whether or not they're going through a hair loss, this is incredible what you're doing. You're really pulling women up behind you and walking in the footsteps of some great heroes yourself. Yes, we get to be heroes. <laughs> Thank you. See you in the next interview. Bye.